Welcome to Books in Sum, your go-to for bite-sized book summaries. Getting the Love You Want by Harville Hendricks The honeymoon period of a new relationship is a period of excitement and bliss, but it can also lead to conflicts and emotional gaps. To preserve love and save a relationship, it is important to use Freudian ideas of psychoanalysis to maintain a healthy, loving, and long-term relationship. This includes learning what your partner has in common with your parents, how your partner can become your enemy, and why you should give your partner flowers now and then. It is also important to remember that our choice of life partner is influenced by our hidden childhood desire, and that we construct an image in our head of our inner child from a young age. Couples can fall out of love when they notice personality traits that echo a parent's character, such as a violent streak or an addiction. The Imago figure influences our choice of partner, as we are unconsciously seeking a person who reminds us of that caregiver. We are also attracted to opposites, as we work to regain traits that we lost when we entered adulthood. Examples of this include Catherine and Bernard, who were clients of the author. Catherine was attracted to Bernard's quiet nature, but when they began to argue over daily issues, his silence angered her and placed a strain on their relationship. John, a man raised by alcoholics, had a similar problem as he was taught by his mother to repress his feelings of anger. The Imago Therapy Program is a program that encourages couples to block their exit routes and spend 12 weeks of quality time together. The aim of the program is to build a stronger relationship. But why do partners avoid each other in the first place is that subconsciously, they see each other as mortal enemies. This is due to a part of the brain called the limbic system, which associates any pain you feel with death. This instinctive reaction was once helpful in avoiding predators but can also trigger you to see the person you promised yourself to, in sickness and in health, as a mortal enemy. This is why people often look for ways out of relationships, even temporarily. It is important to remember that random acts of kindness can be beneficial for people close to us just as much as for random strangers. For a marriage to be successful, we need to give gifts unconditionally. Richard Stewart devised a clever method to address this, asking couples to list all the things they secretly wish their partners would do for them. The method was successful, as granting wishes was an effective way for partners to show each other that they care. To improve communication in your relationship, it is important to explore the three-step approach to non-judgmental listening, which involves mirroring and paraphrasing the partner's problem from their perspective. The author helped Doug and Rita in couples therapy by using container transactions to express rage harmlessly. These transactions involve showing your partner you understand their reasoning, validating their concerns, and empathizing with them. Core scene therapy involves taking harmful arguments and finding ways to rewrite them, which can be especially useful for couples. The author's example demonstrates that while we don't always have to agree, we do need to respect each other's opinion. The core scene for Jack and Deborah was a recurring argument in which Deborah became more aggressive and demanding while Jack retreated further into himself. To rewrite their argument, the couple went through the scene as a theater director would, making Jack speak up for himself and Deborah be less confrontational. This full container transactions work because they let an individual experience catharsis and release repressed emotions. Changing your personality and shedding your ego is a sign of love and will help you grow as a person. However, to succeed as a couple, a partnership needs to address weaknesses. Being willing to make changes in your life is a way of showing your love for your partner and fulfilling their childhood needs. Working to change your personality can help you shed egotistical behavior, but first your ego must die so you can feel universal brotherly love. The key message in this book is that change can be scary, but it's not a death. By ridding yourself of your ego and opening to the emotional needs of others, your unconditional love for your partner and humanity can grow. Actionable advice is to question your alone time and organize regular activities to do together to ensure you stay intimate and that your love for each other stays strong. We hope you found this summary helpful in your listening journey. If you're interested in diving deeper into the topic or getting your hands on the whole book, be sure to check the description below where we've included links to the book and other related products that may be useful to you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on our latest book summaries. And feel free to leave a comment with any suggestions or requests for books you'd like us to cover. Thanks again for tuning in and happy listening.